Aha! Here we are, everyone. Topic 5. Part 1. We're going to be talking about trolling. And what I mean by trolling is patrol. The back bone of policing I mean think about whenever you think of the police right you think of these cars the orcas of the street that's the police to you you don't think of the administrator sitting in his or her office filing paperwork no you think of the officers in their little uniforms and in their little cars driving around trolling the streets patrol is there the they are at the bottom of the hierarchy if you can remember when we did organizational structure stuff right they're at the bottom of the hierarchy and they're they're the most of them they are the front lines they are the customer um, service representatives of the the law enforcement world they are the ones out there talking to people arresting people doing things like that they're also the visible aspect of the police agency you don't see uh, the, the patrol officers are really the ones that represent the police agency they're the ones that are out there they're the ones um, talking to the public also they are the gatekeepers of the criminal justice system it's very seldom only in like murder cases or like certain like robbery or drug cases are the, is it the detectives that make the decisions most of the time it's your average street cop your average patrol officer that's making the decisions all they have are the rules that the department sets for them and the rules that the law sets for them and then they make decisions within that within those parameters. Now, it's in some police agencies, those parameters are, are wider, meaning they have more discretionary scope. And in other police agencies, there are a lot of guidelines and officers are sort of in between a rock and a hard place. But other officers like the fact that patrol work isn't routine. It isn't every day, nine to five shenanigans. Other days, when you're not feeling it, you can just chill and, and wait for calls to come in and you can sit in a parking lot and watch Netflix on your computer. Actually, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think any officers actually do that. But that's a pos I would, pro I, you know, that, and that's why I'm not a cop because I would probably be like, oh, we're, we're not that busy today. All right, I'm just going to pull in behind Rural King and uh, put Netflix on and binge... What am I going to... Oh, I'll probably binge 13 Reasons Why. Okay. So, patrol. They're the people arresting people. They're interacting with the public. Um, not, not everyone in the police agency sees patrol as the most favorable thing or the most fun thing, but other officers do like it. But you have to go through patrol. You have to pay the toll troll, okay? You have to pay your dues. You have to start at the bottom. And patrol work is seen as the bottom. I know a lot of you are like, well, I'm going to have a college degree. I don't have to start at the bottom. You do have to start at the bottom. That's life. Next, slide. Boom. Oh, do you guys like that cool transition? It was like fade. All right. So what's the purpose of patrol? Why do we even have patrol? Why don't they just all hang out like fire people, right? Fire people don't patrol. You don't see this like fire. You don't just see the fire truck just driving around town, nor do you just see the ambulances like, "Hey, are there any dead people around?" Right? They just they chill. So why don't the police just chill? Well, the purpose of deter of, of patrol is also to deter crime and to make people feel safe. But I mean, don't you feel safer when you see the police? I mean, now, let's let, let's not kid ourselves. When I was in college, I did not feel safer when I saw the police. I was like, they're going to catch me doing what I'm doing, which then was, you know, the typical nefarious things that college students get into. You can figure out for yourself what I mean by that. But, yeah, but still, right, I was the criminal, and I was shook when I saw the cops. So those who were not criminals 
we're not shook. Right? You always feel safe. You're like, aha! The police is here. Making me feel safe. And then when I was a criminal, I saw the police. I was like, all right, I'm, you know what? I'm just not going to be a criminal here today. And guess what? I was deterred. Ooh, another fade. All right, so how does it work? Well, um, usually, I mean, it, it varies by jurisdiction, right? You get some smaller agencies um, that don't have a, a, a very spread out jurisdiction, right? So they so they have fewer people on patrol. You get larger agencies, right? They have uh, they have a very large area to patrol, so they have a lot more people in patrol. So it can vary. It can go anywhere from fifty to eighty percent of police officers are patrol officers. That kind of sucks, though, when you have so, such a large need for patrol. Because if you want to then move up in the organization, it's going to be a long time until somebody retires or get fired for you to move up, which kind of sucks big time. All right, so what are hotspots? We've, we've heard of this term before. Well, hotspots are, um, are parts of a, of, a, uh, of a city. So here we go. Here we have a city. And these are the areas within the city where most of the 911 calls are coming from or most of other types of crime are happening, right? So what, one thing that we've noticed that the criminal justice research has shown us is that crime doesn't occur uniformly across the city. Crime occurs in certain areas more than others. And these areas are known as hotspots. So, one thing that we've learned then, that if there are hotspots, we can tell patrol officers to patrol those hotspots. Because guess what? Chances are you're going to, if you're, even if you're just being reactive and a call comes in, you're probably going to be right there anyways. So go to the hotspots. But not every police agency collects this data. They really should. The, the federal government should make it should should provide funds so that these agencies can do this because this is probably one of the most I mean don't don't quote me on this I'm sure some other criminal justice scholars will disagree with me but I would say one of the most tried and true and the thing that one of the most the, the innovations that I would say I'm the most confident in from a criminal justice standpoint would be hotspots policing figuring out where the hotspots are and trolling those areas to deter to to deter crime. Focusing patrol on these hotspots can reduce, it's been shown to reduce crime. And, and you can explain it through deterrence theory or routine activities theory. And it, it works. And it also works for gun crimes. Yeah. Yeah. Gun crimes. So what NRA vice president says, the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. That's not going to work. You know why it's not going to work? Let me explain to you why it's not going to work. Research shows, research, real science shows that good guys with guns are very seldom awake at the time that bad guys with guns are awake. But then you're like, well, well, what about that guy that tried to shoot up that church and then he got shot by the good guy with the gun? That's a very, very good point. But that's not most of the cases. That's that's an anomaly. That's an extraordinary case, again, which is why I made it to the news. That's an extraordinary case. That doesn't happen most of the time. Right? What happens most of the, most of the gun crimes occur in these hot spots right here at later times during second or third shift hours. And during second or third shift hours, Mr. Goody Two Shoes is at home watching the game show network with his wife, eating a freaking Hungry Man TV dinner while all the bad guys are out there with their guns and killing each other. So the argument that good guys with guns will stop bad guys with guns is buffoonery in fact, good guys with guns and bad guys with guns have maybe a 3% overlap in their lifestyle routine activities. So yeah, hotspots policing works really well for gun crimes. If you want to stop the bad guy with the gun, 
You don't have to arm the populace. We don't have to walk around with guns. All of us good guys, we don't have to walk around with guns. The police can stop them. And that's been proven. It's not just been proven in the United States, but it's been proven in Bogota, Colombia. It's been proven in other countries. It's been proven in Pittsburgh. It's been proven in Indianapolis. It's been proven in Kansas City. So, um, most of patrol in the United States is motor patrol or auto automobile patrol. Or if you want to sound real pretentious, you can be like automobile patrol. Um, and that can be about 84% of patrol. And guess what? Most cops that you see, are they walking around? No. Are they on bicycles? No. Are they on motorcycles? No. Only like funeral processions are you have the motorcycle cops no they're in cars and they usually kind of look like killer whales was that in Finding Nemo where the cops are killer whales but in a sense it, cops are kind of like orcas they're cool they are kind of friendly but other times like if things get real crazy they can really murder a seal if you've seen like uh, planet earth Right? And, and cops are kind of like that, right? They're they're very they're cool, they're nice, they're badass. But oh, buddy, if you mess with them, so uh, most of a patrol is an automobile, and you're like, well, why? Because you can go like 75 miles an hour, or more in a car. You can't do that on foot or on a Segway. Now maybe one day we'll have hoverboard police officers or jetpack officers. I would love to, like, if they get jetpacks, I'm becoming a police officer because I would love to be jetpack patrol. It's like jetpacking all the way through town, right? Just think how, like, tactically how awesome jetpacks would be. It's like, instead of just, like, like coming around the corner, you can just come from above and just drop down, Right? Like in Fallout, when you drop down with that armor on, it's just like, you're like, freeze! Jetpack patrol! That'd be dope. Uh, but cars are, are the most popular because you cover more area with it, you get faster, um, and you can put two officers in, in a car, which is nice. I, I've noticed uh, officers who, um, who are uh, who, cars that have two officers in them, you can have one officer doing the navigation, the other one just has to focus on driving, and that makes things even more efficient. Um, foot patrol is more of a, a community policing thing now because when, when you're on foot, there's only so much you can do. You can run with your feet. But it's really good for community relations. People like seeing officers out in the street. People like talking to them. Uh, seeing officers walk around doing things, it makes you feel a lot better. So it's really good for, for community relations. Right when you're just seeing an officer drive through a neighborhood, it's sort of impersonal, right? Because you focus on the car, you don't really focus on the person driving that car. But when you're out and about and you're walking around town and there's officers walking about, you see their faces, you get to know them. Where right? they walk past you and they're like, "Good morning, sir." "Good morning, ma'am." "Good morning, sir." "How you doing?" Right? They do that and it, it feels more personal. And it's good for community relations. You're like, oh yeah, that's officer so and so, right? Same with bicycle patrols. Bicycle patrols are also good in more heavily um, in denser areas like New York City. Have you ever driven in New York City? Yeah, it's the worst. It's the freaking worst. So just think, if you're a police officer, you're like, all right, lights and sirens, everybody, woo! And then like it's just dead bumper to bumper traffic. There's no way to to weave in and out. So bicycles are dope for that. And then I guess the other like, th there's like a missing 2% here, probably like horseback patrol. Horses. So what can impact the, the type of um, policing that officers deliver? Well, you get different types of patrol style. Um, so usually when, um, and we're going to cover this in more detail later on, but 
the amount of work that you do as a police officer can really just depend on what you like to do. You get some officers that are super proactive. These are and these are typically your younger officers, and they're just like, all right, I'm gonna start. Like these are the people who still have, um, they still feel like they they have the potential to make a difference. While uh, some of the older officers are, you know, are like, you know what, crime is a natural aspect of society. I'm just going to do the things that bother the people who are doing the right thing, right? I'm just going to deal with, with dispatch initiated runs. So these are the officers that are like, if something comes in, I'll deal with it, right? Because usually if, if something is not, if they're not told to go somewhere, the way they see it is, well, you know, whatever problem is happening somewhere right now, it's not bothering others. So the ones the people who call the police, those are the people who are being bothered by whatever criminal activity is happening. So I'll respond to that. Whereas the younger guys typically, and I'm not saying that all older officers are like this. I'm just saying typically, typically, most of the time, a lot of the times, not all the time. Younger officers like to be involved in more um, officer, sorry about the typo there, officer initiated activity. So this is where you're pulling over people for for tail lights. I mean, to, to be honest with you, uh, an officer could pretty much pull over anyone at any point in time because there's always something that you're not doing right. Seriously, like if an officer wanted to pull you over, they could probably find some reason to pull you over. So oftentimes, if you're not doing anything blatant and you are getting pulled over, it's probably because the officer thinks you might have something else going on. Maybe it looks like you're stoned. Maybe the, the type of car that you're driving indicates that you might be a drug dealer or that you might um, be up to something no good. Or maybe, so you get officer-initiated activity and you get dispatch-initiated activity. Officer-initiated activity is when the officer is driving around and they decide to pull someone over or, or stop someone on the street or have a chat with someone. Dispatch-initiated is when someone calls 911 and they're like, uh, you know, this is happening, that's happening, can you please respond to this? So officer-initiated activity is much more proactive, while dispatch-initiated activity is a lot more reactive. Then you can also have different organizational styles. Like, what is the admin, what do the command staff want from you? Do they want you to be a watchman? Do they want you to, to focus on peacekeeping? as opposed to law enforcement? Or is there a lot more legalistic control over patrol officers? Do they want patrol officers to bust down anyone that has a misdemeanor warrant out? Do they want the police officers to um, bust down on certain types of crimes? Peacekeeping, not so much the goal as, as just enforcing the law. People are not even going to litter in this city. We're going to arrest for every single thing we can. Or does the department want you to be more service oriented? When you're on patrol, the the police and public think that quick response response times is important. Um, as that, I mean, and, and if you think about it sort of logically, you know, quick response times might mean that it might reduce crime and you know it would satisfy the public. But once we started studying these things, we realized that it doesn't really impact uh, crime rates. It does impact citizen satisfaction. It makes citizens feel more satisfied when the police show up quickly. But does it really impact crime rates? No. Because most of the crimes have already occurred. People have already run away. People have already gotten away. However, citizens don't care. They want fast response times, right? When I go to McDonald's, I don't want to wait five minutes on my Chicken McNuggets. I want them now. I don't want to wait 45 minutes for Domino's to deliver my pizza. I want it now. What's that commercial? J.G. Wentworth. It's my money and I want it now. Please don't sue me. I pay taxes. I've been impacted by crime somehow. I want the police here now. Despite the fact that the police showing up now or the police showing up a tad later 
does not really seem to impact clearance rates. But I understand why the police still focus on it because you got to keep the citizens happy. And that's, uh, I think that's a, a easier thing to accomplish than some of the other things that, that would be needed. So, one of the things that many police officers still believe and a lot of people in the public still believe is that if you increase the amount of traditional patrol, and that means, and what we mean by traditional patrol is you have someone just driving around in their beat. If we increase the amount of people driving around in their beat, then you will reduce crime. You will also reduce the level of fear and crime, and you also uh, make you also make um, increases in citizen satisfaction. That was sort of the traditional view of patrol until the Kansas City Preventive Patrol Experiment. This is one of the first like big time police science experiments, and uh, I think the police foundation was involved in it. It's pretty cool. Um, but let me, let's talk about this a little bit. So what they did was they selected a couple beats um, to include in the study and they increased the um, the patrol officers in, in, those, uh, in those beats. So what they did was they had beats that were only, um, that were only reactive so the officers in those beats only needed needed to respond to criminal active to uh, dispatch runs, whereas um, in the proactive beats they they increased the amount of police officers there, and in the control beats they just they just received the normal amount of patrols that they would have, and, you know usually. And um, so the questions they asked is, would the citizens even notice? A, would the citizens even notice a difference? Um, would it have an impact on crime rates? Would it impact f citizen fear levels? And would it impact uh, citizen satisfaction? And what they found was that it had pretty much no impact on crime. It had almost no impact on citizen levels of safety. Um, it had no impact on citizen. Um, satisfaction or community behavior and so what we can take away from that is, is that by simply just increasing the amount of officers in a beat or telling them to pull more people over isn't necessarily going to stop crime and so this led people to study this further but what then will do that and that's when we came up with hotspots policing that's where that came from whereas hotspots policing is different from just increasing the amount of uh, preventive patrols to directing the patrols to certain crime hotspots I mean think about it like this if you're bleeding if you have a massive gash on your leg like your femoral artery is just spurting blood out. What's more effective? To wrap up your entire body in bandages or to just put a bandage around the area that where the freaking blood is squirting out of? Yeah, both will stop the blood, right? If you wrap your entire body up in, in bandages, yeah, you'll stop the blood, but you're wasting a lot of freaking bandage on things that don't need bandaging. 